yes today we're looking at question 3 on the 2018 cape unit 1 paper 2 paper now question 3 we're showing a breakup of a headland on the shore and we're to answer the questions that follow so question 1 asks that we name one feature that would begin to be eroded if the sea level rose to reach the raised platform i'm going to zoom in a bit now if the sea level rose to reach the raised platform right so the raised the raised platform is here what will happen is that the cliff would start to erode so the cliff once it reached the raised platform the cliff would definitely start to erode Let me zoom out a bit right so the cliff would start to erode now question two because the reason for that is that because all the other features would have already been eroded hence the reason once it reaches the race platform all the stump the stock the wave cut platform the arch everything would have already started to erode so the cliff now would actually start to be eroded now where to outline a change likely to occur to the wave cut platform if there is a rise in sea level over time now the wave cut platform is at the front now what will happen to the wave cut platform if the sea level rose now the wave cut platform will basically be covered and the base of the stump and the stock will be eroded to create a new wave cut platform so what will happen is that the wave cut platform will be covered under water and then the sea level because it's rising it will basically create a new wave cut platform now we're to name the type of coastline that is represented in figure three now figure three is an emergent coastline because um, emergent coastlines are a result of local tectonic upliftment of the land surface or a fall in the elevation of sea level because of the reduction in the water volume of the ocean so it's an emergence emergent coastline because most of its feature is still visible to the land they're not covered under water right so at this area this the, the land seems as if it is being uplifted right so it's the features are not covered under water so it's an emergent coastline now we're to explain question b asks us to explain how infiltration is positively related to interception now remember now that infiltration refers to precipitation that is captured by plant canopy or litter before it reaches the soil surface while infiltration is the movement of water into the ground from the surface now how are these positively related now infiltration is positively related to interception because interception helps to slow down the water droplet thus slowing down the speed of the water and this allows infiltration to take place more effectively and quicker this also reduces soil soil erosion and this extends the lag time so it takes a longer time um, interception allows it to take a longer time for the area to be flooded due to the lag time being extended now part b asks us to explain how infiltration is negatively related to river now infiltration is negatively related to the river because heavy storm because of the heavy storm the rainfall is often far in excess of the infiltration capacity of the soil which leads to much overland flow now in the river channel once the infiltration capacity is reached so once there's no more water can seep into the earth's surface because the infiltration capacity is full the water caught in the river channel will be will basically help to cause flooding once the river has reached its bankful discharge so infiltration once the infiltration capacity once earth has reached the capacity or the amount of water that it can hold once it becomes saturated it will basically cause the river the river channel to be filled quickly because water is caught in the river channel and it has nowhere to go more than downstream so the river the water in the channel will quickly fall to reach its bankful discharge and this is the amount that the river channel can carry before it floods 
Part C asks us to explain one of the coastal features listed below, how it's formed by wave processes and where to include a well-labeled diagram. Now, you can choose one. I did both so that and if you choose the bay or the spit, you are able to answer the question. So the first one is the bay. Now, a bay is a pronounced indentation in the coastline that is usually found in between two headlands. Now, when a stretch of coastline is formed from different types of rocks, so you have a band of soft rocks and you have a band of hard rocks. So you have the soft rocks are usually like clay and sand and these are weaker and therefore they can be eroded quicker to basically form a curve inward in the headland that usually has a beach. Now for the bay what happens is that the soft rocks here they erode quickly right so the wave crashes against the coastline it takes off sections of the soft rock so over that over time you're going to have a curve or a bend in the headland so the bay is usually formed between two headlands so the picture to your far right is a bay now a bay usually has a shallow beach a very calm and shallow beach now for the persons who want to do the spit now a spit is basically a narrow or extended stretch of land or pebble that juts out into the sea from the land now a spit is basically formed when sediments transported along the coast where sediments transported along the coast by long shortage if it's deposited at the bend in the coastline. Now over time, the sediments, they gradually extend into the sea at the point where the coastline changes its shape. So the spit in this picture is just a, a narrow extended stretch of um, piece of land that is made up of sand or pebble and it is attached to the mainland and it juts out into the sea. And it's basically influenced by longshore drift. Now, let me go back. Part D. Part D of the question asks that we discuss fully three factors that limit the economic development of limestone landscape. Now, what are some of the factors that basically limit the economic development of the limestone environment? Now, I have chemical weathering. Now, because chemical weathering is taking place, I'm going to tell chemical weathering, because chemical weathering is taking place rapidly within the limestone, the limestone landscape or the limestone environment, it makes it a bit difficult for any form of economic development to take place. My reason for saying this is because if you have an area that why, how are you going to develop the area economically if you know that a section of the, the, the limestone region may collapse after a while because of the high rate of chemical weathering in that area. Now another factor is the location and the topography of the land. Now the location is that some limestone areas due to their high vegetation content it makes the area inaccessible and the topography is that remember that limestone areas they have a lot of features for example a lot of sinkholes and depressions which make it very very unaccessible so this also aid in the hindrance of the economic development now climate remember that limestone region they are being weathered so carbonation is taking place and in order for carbonation to take place you have to have um, rain water or rainfall now within um, limestone region we do have a lot of rainfall so the type of climatic condition there may also help to hinder the economic development of those environment now limestone environment are basically home to a lot of fauna and flora so a lot of vegetation and animals so some endangered species are located within the limestone environment and these features these creatures they have to be protected so because of the vegetation and animals in this region they are protected and it makes it difficult for the government or anybody to develop economically from this region 
and the final one is the surface and the underground water now remember that we do have a lot of rivers going through the limestone environment because of their permeability so remember that we have a lot of underground caves and so forth and it means that carb um, chemical weathering is taking place without no wood section of the limestone area it will become weak enough to collapse so all of these factors coming together makes it very very difficult for our government to benefit economically from the limestone environment thank you for watching this video please remember to like share subscribe and turn on your post notification bell in order to receive more videos like this leave comments below suggesting geographic topics that you would want me to present on in the comment section below comment the name of your school and the territory for a shout out in my next video until then bye bye